in Western policymaking circles and uh, among political commentators, uh, the Iranian threat is considered to pose the greatest danger to world order and hence must be the primary focus of uh, US foreign policy, Europe's trailing along politely as usual. Uh, this year is called the year of Iran because of the danger of that enormous threat, uh, which does raise a question. What exactly is the Iranian threat? Uh, if you read the public commentary, you don't get much of an answer. But there actually is an authoritative answer, uh, which is ignored. Uh, the authoritative answer is provided by the regular reports to Congress by the Pentagon and US intelligence agencies that come every year reports on uh, the global global security. And of course, they include a section on Iran. Most recent was uh, almost a year ago. Uh, the re reports make it very clear that whatever the Iranian threat is, it's not military. It's all, quote, uh, Iran's uh, military spending is relatively low compared to the rest of the region. In fact, it's less than a quarter of that of Saudi Arabia. And minuscule as compared with the US, of course. Uh, it's uh, Iran's military doctrine is strictly defensive, uh, designed to slow an invasion and to force a diplomatic solution to hostilities. Iran has only limited capacity to project force beyond its borders. They, of course, bring up the nuclear option and say that uh, Iran's nuclear program and its willingness to keep open the possibility of developing nuclear weapons is a central part of its uh, deterrent strategy. Well, the brutal clerical regime in Iran is undoubtedly a major threat to its own people, though it hardly outranks US allies in that regard. Uh, but the threat lies elsewhere, and it's ominous. One element of the threat is Iran's potential deterrent capacity. Notice that that's an illegitimate exercise of sovereignty because it might interfere with US freedom of action in the region. And it's, of course, glaringly obvious why Iran would seek a deterrent capacity. Just take a look at the disposition of forces in the region, including nuclear forces. Uh, seven years ago, one of Israel's leading military historians, Martin von Krefeld, wrote that the world has witnessed how the United States attacked Iraq for, as it turned out, no reason at all. Uh, had the Iranians not tried to build nuclear weapons, they would be crazy, uh, particularly when they're under constant threat by uh, a constant threat of attack by the United States, of course, in violation of the UN Charter. But remember that that doesn't apply to the United States. Whether they are, in fact, developing a nuclear capability, we don't really know, but uh, perhaps so. Well, the Iranian threat, as described in the documents and the reports, goes beyond deterrence. Uh, Iran is also seeking to expand its influence in neighboring countries and thus uh, to, to uh, destabilize uh, the region, as it's called. Uh, notice that when the US Invade and uh, invades and occupies Ir Iran's neighbors, that's stabilization. Uh, when Iran tries to expand its influence, say commercial relations with its neighbors, that's destabilization. That is absolutely routine usage in foreign policy commentary. So for sometimes it becomes almost comical. Here's uh, a prominent foreign policy analyst, uh, James Chase, former editor of Foreign Affairs, rather on the liberal side, incidentally. Uh, he was properly using the term stability in its technical sense when he explained that in order to achieve stability in Chile, it was necessary to destabilize the country, uh, namely by overthrowing the elected Allende government, installing a vicious dictatorship. Sounds contradictory, but it isn't if you understand the technical meaning of the terms. Uh, well, other concerns about Iran, I no time to go into. They're interesting to explore, uh, but I think they simply show, uh, underscore what the guiding doctrines are and their, their continuing status in imperial culture. 
And that's very much in accord with the doctrines that were laid down by uh, FDR's planners back in, during the uh, Second World War. Uh, the United States cannot tolerate any exercise of sovereignty that interferes with its global designs. And uh, the United States and Europe are, of course, engaged in uh, punishing Iran for its threat to stability and trying to get it to become a more civilized country. Uh, but it's useful to recall how isolated the US and Europe are. Uh, the non-aligned countries, which is most of the world, uh, they have uh, for years been vigorously supporting Iran's uh, right to enrich uranium. Uh, within the region, as I mentioned, uh, the irrelevant public uh, even strongly favors Iranian nuclear weapons. Uh, the major regional power, Turkey, voted against the latest U.S. sanctions motion in the Security Council, along with Brazil, uh, which is the most admired country of the South, as polls show. Uh, Turkey's disobedience led to sharp censure at that point, but not for the first time. Uh, Turkey was bitterly condemned in 2003 when the government uh, committed a major crime. It followed the will of 95% of the population and refused to take part in the US-British invasion of Iraq. And uh, that demonstrated its very weak grasp of democracy, which led to <laughs> sanctions and uh, sharp censure. Uh, same today, after the 2010 Security Council misdeed, uh, Turkey was warned by Obama's top diplomat on European affairs, Philip Gordon, that it must demonstrate its, com its commitment to partnership with the West, follow orders in other words. Uh, a scholar with the Council on Foreign Relations asked, uh, how do we keep the Turks in their lane? They're departing, you know, something wrong. Uh, in their lane means following orders like good Democrats, our style Democrats. Uh, Brazil's uh, Lula it was admonished in a New York Times uh, headline. Uh, he uh, was warned that his effort with Turkey to provide a solution to the uranium enrichment issue outside the framework of US power is a spot on the Brazilian leader's legacy. In brief, do what we say. That's your function. It's kind of an interesting sidelight to all of this, which has been effectively suppressed. Uh, the Iran-Turkey-Brazil deal had been approved in advance by President Obama, uh, presumably on the assumption that uh, it wouldn't fail and that would provide an ideological weapon against Iran. Uh, that was revealed by the British Foreign Office, which released the letter of support for it after Brazil was censured. Uh, when the uh, effort succeeded, uh, uh, approval quickly turned to censure, and Washington rammed through a Security Council uh, resolution, which was so weak that China readily signed, and is now chastised uh, for living up to the letter of the resolution, but not following Washington's unilateral directives, which go far beyond it.